John Whitten with Whitten Gunworks. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our testing results information after you get a rifle tested here. There are two sides to our range. The one side we reserve for the Ely ammunition only, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. For the Ely ammunition, we're shooting on a Maton target system, and we have some software that Ely themselves have written. It does a really good job of summarizing some results and give you some explanation of what to look at. There's an awful lot of data there, which is certainly useful to us, but I want to take a minute to show you a little bit about the information that we'll be providing, as well as how you should read it and analyze it. Because at the end of the day, we want you to make the best choice of ammunition for your purposes indeed. Now let's look for a minute at the pages that you can expect to receive after a test and go into a little bit of analysis on what we can learn from them. Well, this particular page shown, you can, at the top, you'll see the group that was a control group, the ammunition that was a control ammunition. This is uh, the ammunition that you'll bring with you when you come to the test range. And so we want something to compare it to to see, you know, how much improvement we can make. So let's blow up one of these groups right here a little bit. So we'll work from left to right right here. In this case, you'll see the lot number of the ammunition. And of course, you could see the diameters of the groups shot on each of the four 10 shot groups that are shot. Now, after we go through and initially shoot one 10 shot group with every lot in the house, we'll go back and we'll select the best lots and we'll shoot an additional three 10 shot groups. And these four numbers that I've circled down at the bottoms are the diameters of each of those 10 shot groups. Now when I say diameter, here's the thing. We're shooting these at 50 meters in the case of an Ely test. And this diameter is the diameter of a circle that would enclose all of the rounds in the group. Pardon my artwork, but the circle will look something about like this. It will touch the edge of the shots in the group and this 18.5 millimeters would be the measurement of that circle. So it's not a center to center measurement as most Americans are used to use it. So again, you can see the diameters of the four shot groups down here at the bottom. And then over on the left side, there's the average of the four shot groups that have been shot right there. So this will be included for each and every lot that is shot on the test. Now let me go back up a little further into the test into some of the other analysis, uh, analysis pages. For each of the ammunitions that multiple groups are shot with, you'll have this result. And we'll pick one right here and come and take a look at it. So there are a couple of things to see here. On the target in the middle right here, this is represented on the ISSF 50 meter target. This is the target that's shot at the Olympics for Olympic events, and the 10 ring is 10 millimeters in diameter with it. So this is a picture of, in this case, the 40 shots that were tested of this lot number that I'm circling. This is how all 40 shots would look if they were shot on that ISSF 50 meter target. Some more information on here. The composite group size, which is the total group size of all four of the groups laid on top of each other, will be shown right here. And in this case, it's 26 and a half millimeters. And so that's an important metric that we're looking at is the group diameter of that, in this case, 26.5 millimeters. Now, let's talk a little bit about not diameter measurement, but score measurement of a group. Picture this. If you had a gun that shot a lot of shots really tight right in the center, and then it shot one that was eh, kind of out at the edge of the group, and, you know, let's say, for example, it shoots 26 millimeters like this right here, okay? That group would have a very high score because there would be a lot of rounds packed right in the very center of the group. Now, for comparison, let's talk about a rifle that shot a group that was shaped a little bit like a donut and the shots aren't packed very tightly in the center of the group, but maybe they're kind of spread around the outside. That group may also shoot a 26 millimeter diameter, just as we're discussing, but that rifle would have a lesser score. Now, the score is over here on this side of the analysis page. And what we're seeing 
and right here is the number of 10.9s, number of 10.8s, and so on, 10.6s, 10.5s, all right? Now what's a, what's a 10 point something, okay? In international circles for many years, scoring's been done electronically. And the good thing about that is, boy, these shooters are really good, so we need a way to separate their score. So the way they did that is they went to decimal scoring. Now, a shot in the very, very center of the target scores a maximum possible point value of 10.9. As the shot gets a little further away from the center, it scores 10.8, 10.7, 10.6, 10.5, you know, on, on down the road just like that. What we really want to see is ideally these bars over here on the left side of the 10.9s and 10.8s and 10.7s, we want those numbers to be very high, of course. And we can expect a graph with a slope, you know, something like this. In other words, we want more of the shots to have a higher value and fewer of the shots to have a lesser value. All right, that's a lot of words, but here's your take home message with it. This score right here is the score if you had shot 60 shots of this ammunition on this, on this target. The reason that's pulled out is that's the number of shots that were shot in the prone events and ISSF matches uh, in years past. So if you shot 60 shots on this target, you would shoot a score of 622.97 points, okay? Now I want you to look at something right here for a comparison. Let's compare this ammunition with the lot down underneath it right here. Talking first about the diameters, again, this top group shoots a diameter of 26.5. The bottom group shoots a slightly larger diameter of 27.1. So the overall size is a little higher. But I want you to notice right here that this score is higher on the bottom group than it is on the top group. And so what that means is, even though the diameter is a little bigger, this lot number ending in 2098 tends to pack more shots in the very center of the group. And so therefore it gets a higher score. Thanks for checking out our video about testing Ely ammunition and how to understand the results. We also test Lapua, SK, RWS, Norma, and any other ammunition that's worthwhile that we can get our hands on on a Megalink target system. Look for our other video about how to understand the Megalink results if you're interested in having any of those ammunitions tested at our facility as well. Listen, we appreciate your attention right here. I'm John Whidden with Whidden Gunworks, and at the end of the day, we're looking to provide you the best ammunition you've ever had.